Now, during the BlizzCon 2019 event, Blizzard finally unveiled Diablo 4 after years of rumors and speculation. Then, two years later, at BlizzCon 2021, we finally saw a lot more about Diablo 4. But Blizzard claimed it still wouldn't be available anytime soon. Although it first appeared that the fourth installment would arrive in 2022, we now know that the highly anticipated game will arrive in 2023. Now, since this isn't too far away, we wanted to look at the 10 characters we hope will appear. So stay tuned to find out all the need to know details. First up, and in no particular order, Abd Al Hazir. Many game fans are hoping to see Abd Al Hazir make an appearance. Who is he? Well, he strikes many as Deckard Kane's opposite, a book smart researcher whose lack of experience prevents him from being particularly helpful. His false reports inject some lightheartedness into various, very serious situations. Now, this man makes a very brief cameo in game, despite being very common there. If he or his ghost manages to live till Diablo 4, spending more time with him could be fun. Next up, Eager Shen. When playing the popular game, game, the player can obtain basic precious stone-related services, such as pearl and decoration creation, from the jeweler in Diablo 3. Whatever the truth of the legend, Eager Shen's true form is private. He first looks to be an elderly man hiding in a barrel, but his captor quickly turns his misfortune into gain by igniting a criticism that would have prevented Shen from discovering the money that he was seeking. He has also given Deckard Kane, another popular character, experiences and remarkable knowledge of culture. Some characters speculate that Shen might be a heavenly entity hiding in plain sight. Another character we hope to see is of course Marius. Marius aka the second Diablo narrator. Never appearing in-game, Marius is slain after being exploited by the prime evils to start several of the game's major crises. Despite his death, Marius is not entirely forgotten because he appears in Diablo 3 as part of Tauriel's memories, signifying one of the angel's regrets. Even for Diablo, Marius's fate is exceptionally horrific. If Marius's soul can still be located after all these years, it would be good to give him some relief in the upcoming game after everything that he has gone through. Through. Next up, Cormac the Templar. Now, Cormac is one of the three companion characters in Diablo 3 that the player may bring along. Cormac, who comes from a solicitation for Extreme Legends, starts the game as an unbending radical and ends it by eradicating his previous solicitation. Cormac's story is shocking because it came across differently than his counterparts. What will the Templars look like when Diablo 4 takes place? Could Cormac have changed it at some point, giving it a new justification? Or could he have eliminated it at some point? Does he ever date his crush, Irina? These are issues that certainly need addressing. Li Ming, aka the Wizard, is another key character that we want to see in Diablo 4. Since the other hero's goals are centered on acts of bravery, Li Ming is motivated by self-improvement, and Li Ming is already more interesting than the other heroes. Although playing a conceited jerk is entertaining, the Sanctuary universe may suffer as a result. Nevertheless, he is a very interesting character, and it should also be noted that Li Ming was one of the seven playable characters in the third game. Next up, Tyriel. Tyriel is a deeply ingrained player accomplice and an angel. He was first featured in Diablo 2, where he frequently offers advice on matters of heaven and hell. In the third game, he gives up some of his majesty to appear as a normal person, continuing to serve heaven while doing so. His key role in Diablo Legends and completing all three games essentially ensures his appearance in Diablo 4. In any case, it's not clear yet whether a human angel would experience the negative effects of aging, which could cause him to pass away before the events of the next game. Imperius is also someone that many fans want to see in the upcoming Diablo installment. Now, Imperius has to be one of the best warriors in the Diablo universe, along with the current head of the Anguirus Council. He usually plays a hostile role, especially in Diablo 3. Additionally, we witnessed him almost assault the player, but luckily, Diablo intervened. Later, he asks for the player's assistance, but expresses little appreciation. Imperius is an unpleasant angel all around, so hopefully, in the fourth installment, players will have the chance to attack him. And of course, what would Diablo be without Adria? She first made an appearance in the first game as a helpful vendor before making a comeback in the third game as an enemy who sacrificed her daughter to bring back Diablo. The change, nevertheless, comes as a bit of a shock, even though little is known about her existence in Tristram. Even stranger, the notebooks that include her last words give a realistic portrait of a thoughtful woman with difficult concerns to pose to the world. What compelled Adriel to do such awful deeds? It would be intriguing to learn more in Diablo 4 if she survives in world or in heart. Next up, Deckard Kane. The final Horridrim is well known for being an elderly person who hangs around and notices charming things. He has appeared in every Diablo game as a key character. However, he tragically dies in Diablo 3, but it would be acceptable at this point for him to appear in Diablo 4 as a soul structure or as the narrator of collectible legend items as he did in 3. Though it's hard to imagine Diablo without him, he may have run his course. Only time will tell. And finally, Zoltan Kule. Otherwise known as Deckard Kane's darker counterpart, Zoltan Kule appears as an evil wizard in Act 2 of Diablo 3, who must be revived for the player to reach his archive and the Black Soul Stone. Although he is a very simple one 
playoff villain, the player base loves him for his brazen villainy and amusing banter, which may be why Blizzard included him in their expansion content, even though he is a very straightforward, one-off antagonist. Since he is such a captivating character, we really believe that he will appear in Diablo 4. Speaking of Diablo 4, here are some other aspects that we hope to appear in the next installment of the popular video game. First up, PvP expansion. Now, players in Diablo 2 had a competitive mode to grind endlessly for better gear and constantly alter builds to raise the DPS a little. Diablo 2 offered some interesting PvP action. It would be intriguing to see Diablo 4 develop that in further detail. Tag teams, tighter 2v2 matchups, competitive team matches, and even some inventive game variants. Players would have a purpose to grind if Diablo 4 accommodated their desire to test their metal against one another. Next up, larger parties. Remember the large player parties in the second game? Running the Diablo 2 storyline in cooperative mode with eight players was one of the game's most compelling experiences. To match the party's firepower, the game increased complexity, leading to some fantastic moments. For whatever reason, Diablo 3 reduced the number of cooperative players it supported to only four, which was a blunder. Fans would love to see Diablo 4 bring back huge co-op play and even add massive raid dungeons for groups of 10 to 20 people to take on. We also hope to see some new realms in Diablo 4. In general, the Diablo series has remarkably transported gamers to untamed landscapes and chaotic regions. Many other places may be explored, including endless deserts, scary rainforests, cathedrals, the heights of heaven, and the depths of hell. The history of this universe is full of intriguing possibilities, including the black abyss within the burning hells, the void, undiscovered pocket dimensions where powerful beings either hide or are imprisoned, other worlds where the battle between heaven and hell is raging, and locations where demons have already won. There are various potential destinations for players in Diablo 4, beyond Tristram, the highest level of hell, or another desert. Next, the inclusion of pets and minions. Now, Diablo 3 did an excellent job at automating gold gathering, and seeing it continue in the following game would be wonderful. The play would be more streamlined, and the fights would be more focused if you had pets or minions that did more than just roam the map collecting gold. A system that enables players to store items on their pet or minion, or even send them back to camp to deliver the goods, would keep players engaged in the grind and greatly enhance the series' quality of life. And finally, a darker world. Players descend inside a cathedral overtaken by corruption in the first Diablo, which featured a grim plot. In Diablo 2, the world was being conquered by demons as the previous heroes fell into madness. The fanbase's biggest wish is for the games to take on a more grim and dark tone. The morality of it all is a murky shade of grey. The heroes must make horrifying sacrifices merely to contain or delay evil because defeating it is impossible, and perhaps even see the player unintentionally carry out the demon's plans like the first game did. Many players want to feel that their actions matter. And there you have it, everything that you need to know about the characters that we hope to make an appearance in Diablo 4. Now, make sure to let us know your thoughts down below, and as always, thanks for watching.